Speaker Pelosi said today she hoped her, your family would conduct an intervention with yeah. you. What's your reaction to that? No, I saw her uh, read it perfectly, just the way she said it. It's a very, very uh, sort of a nasty type statement. But I will say this. She, wa she said I walked into the room right next door yesterday and walked in and started screaming and yelling. Just the opposite. Just the opposite. Because I know that they will always say that, even if it didn't happen, because this happened once before. I walked out. I was so calm. You all saw me minutes later. I was at a news conference. I was extremely calm. I was probably even more so in that room. So I walked into the cabinet room. You had the, uh, the group, crying Chuck, crazy Nancy. I tell you what, I've been watching her, and I have, I have been watching her for a long period of time. She's not the same person. Uh, she's lost it. Now, as far as the group is concerned, where is uh, Sarah, Kellyanne? Where are you? Come here a minute. You were in that room. Kellyanne? Uh, you were in the room. Sarah was in the room. Mercedes was in the room yesterday. So I just want to let you know, every time I go into a room, if there aren't cameras, they come out and say, oh, he was yelling, he was screaming. Kellyanne, what was my temperament yesterday? In the Very room? calm, no temper tantrum. I told the facts first crowd that they published that they were fuming, temper tantrum, rage, lost it, that that's just a lie because uh, everyone was there. Just somebody had it on tape. Good. But you were very calm. So they the have cabinet. it on tape someplace? Sure. Good. Cabinet, good. you started at the end of the table. Your case. He doesn't. Want, Peter doesn't want to hear this, by the way. Well, he wants to ask him. Because he he doesn't. He's fake news. But the go ahead. Are, why, Mr. President, why would you have to raise your voice? You said to yes. them, when you're done, your two tracks, come back and we'll talk about infrastructure. You've made that very clear. We, we had the infrastructure, meeting, Sarah, drug right? pricing, USMCA. You've made that very clear to them. And I just don't know what she's going to do with USMCA. It's going to be one of the great trade deals of all time. And frankly, if we didn't have tariffs. We would never have a deal like this, because when Canada, when Mexico said they're not going to agree to certain points, I said, that's OK. We're just going to tariff your nation. We're going to tariff you. Either you're going to agree or not. It's a great deal. In fact, you know, your friends on the other side of the border, uh, they started striking and picketing. So that's usually not a good sign for the other side, right? We made a great deal. But whether or not uh, Pelosi understands it or whether — I don't think she's capable right now of understanding it. I think she's got a lot of problems. Mercedes, you were in the room yesterday. I walked in, and I would say in this voice, I said, not right what you did, and calling a meeting like this wasn't right. And so I said, so I'm going to postpone it or call it off. But you can focus on one thing. You shouldn't go down two tracks at the same time, because they can't. They're, they're so — the whole — the whole Democrat Party is very messed up. They have never recovered from the great election of 2016, an election that I think you folks liked very much, right? <laughs> well, Nancy Pelosi was not happy about it, and she is a mess. Uh, let me ask you this, uh, Mercedes. You're always a straight talker. You were in that room yesterday? Yes, sir. What was my attitude when I walked in? Did I have a scream? No, you were very calm and you were very direct. And you sent a very firm message to the Speaker and to the Democrats. And it, it's very discouraging and disgraceful to see that the Speaker would decide an hour before coming to the White House to make those comments, call it that there's a cover-up, and then strike into the White House and expect there to be a constructive meeting. You know, we want to solve these big issues of infrastructure. We want to solve these big issues of USMCA. You yourself have tried time and time again to negotiate and work with them on issues like border security, which they call a manufactured crisis. And it's time for them to wake up and to stop waging this political war and these endless investigations and start to really find uh, the solutions that the American people are looking for, that our farmers are looking for. Right. And I think it's going to be very hard for Nancy Pelosi to stop that. Now, they're a do-nothing group of people. The Democrats have done nothing other than obstruct. They're obstructing this country, but they are obstructing. Uh, and it'll be very interesting to see whether or not they approve the USMCA, which we need. Uh, is Sarah there? Sarah? Yeah, Larry was called out. Mr. Larry, Mr. Larry, Larry, uh, Mr. Larry, were you at the Larry meeting? Cutler. Yes, sir. Oh, that's fantastic. The great Larry Cutler. Could you come here, please? You're not afraid of television. I know. <laughs> I think he's done more live television. Maybe Regis has you by a little bit, right? <laughs> not by much. Larry, you were at the meeting yesterday, yes, right? So they have this narrative that they want to put out. Because I saw Crying Chuck yesterday, and he went out, and he said he was stomping, and he was this or that. and that. Uh, Larry, you were there. There were many people there, by the way, many people. We can get you 
25, 20 other people to say this. Uh, what was my attitude yesterday at the meeting? Uh, Mercy's right. Uh, Kellyanne's right. You were very calm. And you laid out the case. You had a lot of numbers of what you've contributed in terms of paperwork and uh, witnesses and so forth. While you were there, they didn't say anything. Speaker didn't say anything. And, um, and you left. You made your case. Well, it was very much, calm, very much calmer than some of our trade meetings. I was, saying, <laughs> I was saying calm like I was at the news conference two minutes ago. Mr. Uh, President, I wanted to say one more thing. When, when the 12 Democrats were here on April 30th for the first meeting, they went out to the sticks and addressed the press. And I think you should go back and play Speaker Pelosi's comments from that day because she made very clear that it was a productive, constructive move toward infrastructure. And some of you asked her, how will you investigate him and work on infrastructure? And she said, we didn't talk about investigations. We're here to talk about infrastructure. So that changed yesterday, an hour before she came here. And there's really, if you look at it, hi, Sarah. We're just talking about the meeting. You were there yesterday? Yes, were sir. you? Yes. Just come forward. Does anybody know Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, uh, we're just talking about the meeting yesterday. Uh, the narrative was I was screaming and ranting and <laughs> raving, and it was terrible. And I watched Nancy, and she was all crazy yesterday. She put the hands and everything. She reminded me of uh, Beto. She actually reminded me of Beto, maybe a little bit worse. But just out of curiosity, you were there. What was my tone yesterday at the meeting? Uh, very calm. I've seen both, and this was definitely not uh, <laughs> angry or ranting. Uh, very calm and straightforward and clear um, that we have to actually get to work and do good things for the American people. And it's going to be impossible to do that if we're spending all of our time fighting. So, uh, Couldn't have been more calm. I then respectfully said sorry to inconvenience, inconvenience you, and I left the room. Uh, I then went directly to the press conference, right? And the reason I asked them to say, because this happened to me once before with the same group, Cry and Chuck. I don't want to say Crazy Nancy, because if I say that, you're going to say it's a copy of Crazy Bernie, and that's no good, because he, Bernie is definitely crazy. But, but uh, I did it because we had this instance at least once before where I was very, very calm on another occasion, and they walked out to the sticks and they said it was horrible. He was ranting. He was raving. He was pounding the table. The reason I didn't do that is because I didn't want them to say I would do that, but they said it anyway. And so I thought they may say it again. So I'm very glad that you all saw it. Were you there, Hogan? You, you know about it. But I've seen the first one, Mr. President. And that accusation that you pounded your fist, and I'll be honest, you have every right to do that. We face a crisis on our southern border, and they've done nothing. Uh, they have not worked with you. All they've done is mocked and derided you. In fact, calling us liars, calling you a liar for calling out exactly what's happening at the southern border. You laid it out the case of them. They refused to work with you then, and they're refusing to work with you now. These are bad people. You know, a lot of people say deep state. I don't say deep state. We have a lot of bad people, and I think they're being found out. I think right now, uh, I saw where Comey is blaming this one, and Brennan's blaming another one, and uh, they're going against each other, and Clapper, I think, yesterday maybe is blaming President Obama. Oh, so surprised to see that happening. Got a lot of bad people. Got a lot of bad people, and it's a shame. But I, I said to everybody before I walked in, I said, I'm going to be very calm because I don't want them going out to the press and saying that I was anything but calm. So I was extremely calm, very much like I am right now. And it was sad when I watched Nancy all moving, the movement and the hands and the craziness. And I watched it. That's, by the way, a person that's got some problems. But when I watched that this morning, then I went over to Arlington National Cemetery for a very beautiful moment with the First Lady. But I watched that this morning. And that's just a narrative they want to put out. And I think it's pretty sad when they have to play that kind of narrative. I think it's a very sad thing for our country.